Welcome to the Revelation Code. I'm your host Suzanne and I want you to stay with us over the next 30 minutes for an in-depth look into the world of prophecy and how it affects your life today. Whether you believe in prophecy or not, the prophetic words in the Bible are coming true daily. Wars and rumors of war, nations rising up, and the rise of famine and sickness all point to the end of time the Bible talks about. How close are we to the end of days? And what will happen in our lifetime? Stay tuned, you're about to find out. Today on the Revelation Code. Here's the thing. In the year 2015, there will be two solar eclipses. The sun will be darkened twice. But the interesting thing is, each time it will mark something. When that first one happens in the springtime, it's going to mark the day that is the exact center point of the year of the Shemitah. The second eclipse is going to come on Elul 29, the day of wipeout. And at the end, I'm going to give you the ironic blessing, which is from my father's, uh, from in the language of Jesus. But we're going to begin to reveal a mystery that is 3,000 years old from the Bible that is so big, it's so precise. It's so all-encompassing that it lies behind virtually everything. That's what I've called here as the mystery of the Shemitah. It lies behind the rise and fall of the stock market, the future of our economy, when Wall Street will crash, when the economy will, will implode, which people pay fortunes to know, and yet God has the answer in his word. And the, the mystery is so big, it lies behind the rise and fall of nations, empires, superpowers, the key to when there will be global cataclysms, the timing of world wars, the dropping of nuclear weapons, 9-11, and much more. The rise of America and what may be the fall of America. The past, present, and future. So big I barely had room to put it down in the book. And it came rapid fire, just as the harbinger came rapid fire. It really wrote itself in the same way. I thought the harbinger was fast, happened in, in my spare time in four months. This happened in a month and a half when I was on the road. And what we're ultimately going to talk about, not only at the end times as well, because it touches on that, and what lies ahead. Because the, what I'd say, the next Shemitah, which I'll get into it, has just begun. The mystery is now converging with the mystery of the harbingers of judgment. And what it might have to do with even the signs in heaven. I'm careful about date setting. And I never want to get dogmatic. But in the book I do include dates. But at the same time, just to be aware of. We can touch on, we're going to touch on some of them. Now when, since the harbinger was released, what is in the book has been coming true. The harbingers have been continuing to manifest. It's a sign that America is progressing in its course toward judgment. Even today, the news came out that the Supreme Court had basically said, we are not going to challenge, we're not going to take up the case So to protect the bans which protected marriage. So therefore, in one sweep, in one moment, about six more states are now going to end the biblical definition of marriage as we stand here. Now it'll be 30. And paralleling this, you, we have the harbingers continuing, is the continued apostasy, the descent of our nation. The harbinger was released in 2012. That year was a tipping point with regard to America ending the biblical definition of marriage. And when you reach a tipping point, things accelerate. And that's what we're watching now. It's as if, and even in the last year, it's a, you have the sense that things are unraveling in the world. 
And so, you know, the Lord said, before he judges, he warns. I believe that's why the harbinger came out when it did. One of the mysteries of the harbinger is called the mystery of the Shemitah. It begins there, but it doesn't end there. There's one line in the book where those who have read it, Noriel asked the prophet, is this just something that is, hap, began after 9-11, or does it come before? Does it affect things after? The prophet responds, it is not for now. But the thing is, I put that in there because I knew there was more to it, and there would be a time to speak of it. I knew it was big. I did not know how big until just really a few months ago. And then when I was on the road on, in May and June, and then in the six weeks this book came out, it was really just kind of uh, printed, uh, recently w rushed to the shelves. This is an ancient mystery that has been affecting your life, my life, since we were born. And it will affect your future. I can only touch but I will, on some, but I will give you a good idea. First to set the stage. Every seventh day is the Sabbath day. We know that. But a lot of believers don't know that every seventh year was the Sabbath year. There was no sowing of the land, no reaping, no selling or buying of the fruits of the land. Everything rested. The land rested for an entire year of economic cessation. The purpose was to turn away from worldly things and, and seek God above everything. A year to declare that God is sovereign over everything. And that everything, the land belongs to God, not us. And even what we have, our money belongs to God, not us. And all the blessings of the land and of life cannot be taken for granted. They come from God. And so the point of life isn't to seek more blessing. The point of life is to seek the giver of the blessing. That's what it was about. On the, boy, you're alive in God. I'm just talking about that, and you're, that's what, great. <laughs> On the last day of the seventh year, something unique happened, and that year is called, in Hebrew, the year of the Shemitah. That's the name. The, the last day of that year, the day is called Elul 29, the 29th day of the month of Elul on the Hebrew calendar. Something unique happened. On that day, the Bible says all debts are wiped out, all credits wiped out, all the net. Now you're clapping. Now this one is clapping. You want this, don't you? All credit is wiped out. The nation's financial accounts are wiped clean. Everyone who owed something, you're free. Everything that was owed to you, release. The nation's financial account, done. It's the day, Elul 29 is called, it's the day of the Shemitah itself. The whole year is the year of the Shemitah, but it's the day of the Shemitah. Shemitah can be translated as to mean the release. The day of nullification, wipe out. It was the peak. The whole Shemitah year builds up to that day. Now the Shemitah was meant to be a blessing, but as Israel turned away from God and went after other gods and broke the Shemitah, the Shemitah metamorphosizes from a sign of blessing to a sign of judgment on a nation that had once known God but turned away and served other gods, the gods of prosperity. It was a sign of judgment that strikes the nation's sustenance, its blessings, its prosperity, its financial realm, its economic realm, and more to say, nation, it's not these things, come back to your God. In the year 586 BC, in the days of the prophet Jeremiah, the Shemitah falls upon Israel in the form of judgment as the armies of Babylon overrun the land. The city of Jerusalem goes up in flames. It is razed to the ground. The land is desolate. The people are removed and taken captive into exile in the land of Babylon. And the prophet Jeremiah is told this judgment will last 70 years. Why 70 years? It's all because of the mystery of the Shemitah. The Torah, the law said, when judgment came on the land, the land would rest and keep its Sabbaths for the times that the Sabbaths were broken. So in other words, it's talking about the Shemitahs. The land is now resting. The people are gone and all the Shemitahs that they didn't observe now are observed. The nation had broken 70 Shemitahs. So now the land observes the 70 Shemitahs, 70 years. The judgment was determined by the Shemitah. The timing, the Shemitah determines the timing of judgment. It affected and transformed the nation's economic realm, its, its production, its labor, its trade, its employment, its everything, finance, everything. 
and even finally its own existence. Now God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is it possible that this mystery of the Shemitah could still be in effect even today showing the hand of God? That God could speak through it, that God could use its pattern to show himself, to even mark events with his fingerprint, he, he wove the pattern of the seventh day into the, into the world that all across the world, everyone observes a seven-day week. But it wasn't just the seventh day, it was the seventh year. Could that ancient mystery that began on Mount Sinai with Moses still be affecting human history in every one of our lives? Remember, the Shemitah first strikes the economic realm, financial realm, causes economic cessation, wiping out financial accounts. In modern times, when that happens, we don't call it a Shemitah, we call it a recession or a depression or a stock market collapse. Could this sound effects, it's part of the presentation. Could this mystery actually be affecting our lives? We'll just touch on some of the things. One of the chapters is called The Cycles of Sinai and the Mystery of Cataclysms. To give you an idea, in the last 40 years, there have been five major long-term collapses of the financial realm. In other words, when the stock market reaches its peak long-term and then begins a long-term collapse, often causes a recession or is linked to that, in the year, the years of the beginning of these collapses, listen to the years, are this. Some of you remember them. 1973, 1980, 1987, 2000, and 2007. Now remember the mystery. The Shemitah is a seven-year mystery. Notice anything strange about those years? 1973 to 1980, seven-year cycle. 1980, 1987, seven-year cycle. 2000, 2007, seven-year cycle. And the thing in between them, there's actually two seven-year cycles. Every single major collapse takes, took place in our lives according to a seven-year cycle. It's either seven years before, or before the one after it or the one before after. Notice the next puzzle piece. Did any of these five collapses take place connected to the year, the actual biblical year of the Shemitah? The answer is yes. How many of them? Every single one of them, 100% of the crashes in our life, the great crashes, took place not only in a seven-year cycle, but according to a precise seven-year cycle of the Bible appointed by God. Now let's expand it. What if you look at the greatest long-term collapses, not just 40 years, but of modern history? Do any of the greatest collapses take place, I'm talking about long-term collapse, do they take place in the year of the Shemitah? Or they happen, it should be one out of seven chance. Well, so if you look at the top ten or so, do any of them happen in the year of the biblical Shemitah? The answer is, not one in seven, the majority of them. Only a minority take place outside what God appointed. Of the top three greatest big long-term collapses in modern history, 100% of them take place in the Shemitah. Number three was the crash of 1937-1938. The Shemitah was 1937-1938. Number two, we're still getting out of it, sort of, not exactly. The Great Recession, the global financial collapse began 2007-2008. The Shemitah was, guess, 2007-2008. Number one, the Great Depression, in the critical, the crit, its critical year was 1930, 1931, which seals it. The Shemitah was 1930, 1931. Let's zoom up on it for a moment. 1937, the Shemitah begins. The very next day, Wall Street collapses. 1931, the Shemitah reaches its peak day. That ushers in the month that is the greatest collapse percentage, month-long collapse in Wall Street history. The key month of the Shemitah is the month called Tishri. Try it, Tishri. You can speak Hebrew in Kentucky. Tishri. Easy. The sacred, it is these Tishri, is the sacred month of the Hebrew calendar. In that month, you've got all the high holy days. We're in it right now. We're right, we just, we just passed the day of atonement. We're heading to tabernacles. The month of Tishri, and I love, thank you, Pastor Bob, for the sound effects are great that you arranged here. The month of Tishri ushers in the Shemitah, 
And it, it begins it and it ends it. It crowns it. And so it happens, so therefore, not only does it begin it, but it crowns the peak when it reaches that peak day, Elul 29, that wipeout day, then comes Tishri at that same moment at sunset. So it manifests the wipeout. It manifests the repercussions of the financial realm. So here is the, the key. Here's the question. What happens if instead of looking at the long-term crashes, what if you look at the greatest single-day crashes in Wall Street history? It only happens on one day, the, great, the time when the greatest percentage is wiped out. Well, here is the thing. Do any of them, out of the top ones, do any of them, they can happen any time of 12 months, should happen, should happen all across the board in a year, do any of them happen around or at the time of Tishri, the key month of the Shemitah? Should be less than 1 at 10. You have 1 in 12 months, you got the top 10. If nothing supernatural, should maybe one. Now listen to the answer. Of the greatest single day crashes in stock market history, the majority of them cluster all around one Hebrew month. The month that God happened to appoint for the wiping out of financial accounts. In fact, the, major in fact, the majority of them take place in a, listen to this, a two and a half week period on the biblical calendar centered on Tishri. Two and a half weeks all. Now this, and you, you probably have noticed this, you ever notice why these great crashes tend to take place in the autumn? That has mystified financial analysts for ages. They came up with all different reasons and they never worked. They said, because the farmers are getting paid, nothing, things, it always keeps happening. And they had one, and the reason is the mysteries in the Bible. Because it, they, it always happens September, October. Well, September, October is the Hebrew month of Tishri. The very month that God appointed to nullify the financial realm. Now listen to this here. The greatest three percentage crashes, single day in history, are all called black. Black Monday, Great Depression. Black Tuesday in the Great Depression. And Black Monday in 1987. Some of you remember. But in Hebrew, listen to their names. Tishri 24, Tishri 25, and Tishri 26. All of them happen within two days of each other in the Hebrew calendar. Now what happens if we look at not just the percentage crashes, but the, the point, volume, big magnitude crashes, the biggest crashes ever? Do any of them happen near that Elul 29, that only comes once every seven years, Elul 29, that's the wipeout day in the Bible. Do any, top five, do any of them happen? The answer is all five of them happen right around the time or on the time of the biblical day that comes around once in seven years. The fifth greatest point crash happens in proximity to that, that Elul 29, 99.6%. Fourth greatest crash, 97.5%. Third greatest crash, 100%. Second greatest crash, 99.3% close to that day. And first crash, 100%. Gets even more stunning. Because the phenomenon is intensifying now. It's been increasing. And I'm going to get back to that because that is linked to judgment. When this happens, because it's not just a pattern, it is a pattern that can be linked to judgment, and that's why we're talking about it tonight. But the mystery is so big that it affects the rise and fall of nations themselves, the world. Shemitah, in Hebrew it means the fall, but it also means, or actually it means the release, but it also means the collapse, the fall, and the shaking. In 586, when the Shemitah came upon Israel, or the judgment came, it didn't just wipe away financial accounts, it wiped away a city of Jerusalem, it wiped away reality, it wiped away an entire nation. So the Shemitah, and you know, you know, when it happened, in order for it to happen, as God said, it had to happen at the exact time, so that means Babylon, the empire, had to rise at the exact appointed time, according to the Shemitah. And then... They had to be there for 70 years, so something had to happen to make Babylon fall. Well, it was Persia rises up, and then Babylon falls, and the Jewish people go back to the land. The Shemitah's over. So even the rise and fall of empires are determined by this mystery. 
What does this have to do with us today? That mean you can take the Shemitah to mean the shaking. The shaking. Whew. Wow. Never been this coordinated before. Oh boy. I'm afraid to go on. I don't know what's going to happen. The greatest shaking in world history. Up to the early 20th century was the First World War. The war to end all wars. The, the shaking, it was the year of the shaking of nations. The key turning point year was 1917. 1917 was the year of the Shemitah. The Shemitah means also the collapse. In that time, you have the collapse of, of empire after empire. You have the Russian Empire collapses, 1917. Then you have, you have three other empires that then are set in motion the, to collapse. The Turkish Empire, the German Empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, they all collapse in this same time. The Shemitah means, nulli talks about, involves nullifying. Well, kingdoms are nullified. Europe is nullified. And, and yet, it also is about the rising of powers. It went, often when the Shemitah comes, given the right circumstances, it means the, the fall and changing of powers, world powers. The Shemitah determines, well, one nation rises, one power rises, that is the United States of America. The year 1917 marks America's, the beginning of America's rise to world superpower. It enters the war for the first time, becomes the leader of nations, enters in the year of the Shemitah. World history changes. The center of the financial world leaves London, leaves the British Empire, leaves the old world, and goes to New York. America becomes the center of the financial realm of the world. The great history, in fact, it becomes the greatest creditor nation on earth because of that war. The Shemitah changes all things. Which, bring, if you go four Shemitahs later, bring it forward, which is 28 years, it leads you to another Shemitah year, which is the year 1945. 1945, another global cataclysm reaches its peak. The conflict started in 1938 when Hitler invaded Austria and Czechoslovakia. 1938 was the year of the Shemitah. It begins in 1938, the, go, the cycle goes seven years to 1945, that is the end of the war at the same time. It follows the pattern of the Shemitah. In fact, even the Holocaust begins, it is marked 1938, Kristallnacht and the first deportations, 1938, it goes for a seven year cycle to 1945, the next Shemitah. It all follows that word. In fact, as, as the Second World War, and here again you have nullification, you have wiping out, you have the changing, rising, falling of nations. The Shemitah reaches its peak in August, September 1945. The World War, the Second World War reaches its peak 1945, August, September. As it reaches that final close about the time of nullification, what happens? As it reaches that time, the greatest power of nullification comes on the earth, the atom bomb. And as then soon and finally the Shemitah ends, and when it ends, within that same week, the Second World War comes to a close. In fact, when they had the, the victory parade, when all the allies, the only victory parade procession in Berlin, only time that they were all together at the actual end of the war, the very day they sealed the end of the war was the day Elul 29. The end of the Shemitah down to the day. The Shemitah brings the rising and falling. So 1945 brings the Cold War, a new world order, and brings...
What does the fall of a tower speak of? The year of the Shemitah. And we're going to get into, before we go, I'm going to get into what's in its place, that other tower, which is one of the harbingers. But here the Shemitah speaks also of the fall of nations. The warning of the Shemitah, if a nation follows God, it is blessed in the end. If a nation does not follow God, it is not blessed. If a nation once followed God and then turns from God, it is judged. And to whom much is given, much is required. Just as Israel. And the warning is that America's blessings come only from God. And if America cannot turn away, reject, defy, blaspheme that God and expect his blessings to remain on the land. The crown of the head of nations that America has had since most of us were born, I believe we will see it removed if America does not turn back to God. Receive today's sermon on DVD or CD or become a monthly partner and receive each sermon this season on CD, DVD, plus find out more on our Facebook page. And stay up to date with what's happening in prophecy. Join me next week as we look further into unlocking the Revelation Code.